We're talking pony rides, fresh bouquets of flowers, honey, chicken skewers, jewelry, marshmallow shooters, and sweet corn. All of that can be found and much more at the Great Falls Farmer's Market. We're talking with the manager on this episode of We're No Damn Experts. Best damn podcast, the best damn town. You want to get up, get ready to get down. Welcome to the greatest damn town in Montana, Great Falls. As you all know, I'm Rebecca Ingham. <laughs> oh, I was I thought you were going on a on a tangent there for a moment. Yeah. And I'm Shannon Newth, as hopefully you're learning at this point. <laughs> and together we we're are no, no damn, damn experts. experts. You didn't you didn't you said we are instead of were. Oh. Made it That's f- an incorrect statement then, because we we're we're no damn experts. Yes. That's the name of it. Yeah, not we are. <laughs> Goodness, we're I mean, off to a bad start. It's still start. correct, but not the name. And anyway, <laughs> today on today's podcast <laughs> of We're No Damn Experts, <laughs> we have with us a woman who's claiming she's not necessarily an expert and maybe got a little bit of a bait and switch that happened to her <laughs> today. So we yeah. will see. How well today goes. I know it's going to be amazing. Yes. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. Michelle Wynn, the manager of our Great Falls Farmer's Market. Yes, a wonderful farmer's market. Welcome, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. And we're glad you're here, even if it's, you know, maybe not what you were expecting, but we're glad you're here. And and we need an expert amongst us, so that's you. I we've, appreciate we've decided that. decided that that's you. Okay. <laughs> Even if you don't want to wear that crown, yeah, you've got I'll it. wear it for now. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. At least for an hour. Yes, and you'll be for done. sure. Yeah. All right. So for years, this farmer's market's been going on. I don't know how many years. Maybe 30, 40? <laughs> I think at least 30, yes. Okay. Yep. So we'll figure that out at some point. But it is absolutely a wonderful farmer's market that closes down our central In front first of the Civic River Center. Drive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and people really love going to it. Why do you suppose that is? I think a lot of it is, is just <laughs> our vendors. We have phenomenal vendors who... I mean, their talent is amazing. And we've had so many new ones this year and last year. And I think the variety, I think that's what draws people down is because when they come, every week there's someone different there. And I just think that the food, everybody loves food. So Mm, the food there is fantastic. So I think those two things, definitely. And the vendors change out. I mean, some... My understanding is some get a booth for the entire season and some just go like on a week to week basis. Like yes. they're going to get a better offer than hanging out at the Great Falls <laughs> Farmer's Market. Maybe they just have other things to do oh, during yeah. the summertime. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, vendors. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, how many vendors in general are there at the Farmer's Market? So on the average, every Saturday we have between 100 and 115 Holy wow, every, I did not realize yes, it was that many. Every Saturday. I've heard it is it is one of, if not the largest farmer's markets in Montana. Is Ooh. that accurate? And I have heard the same thing. Okay. I haven't been to the other We're ones. We're going to claim that. Yes, yeah. but I have actually heard from people who have gone to other, the other markets in Montana that ours is one of the bigger ones. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we average between 100 to about 115 every Saturday. And this year so far, we've probably gotten about... 250 applications. Wow. So do you cut, like, there's a waiting list or cut people off or 250 and only 115 show up? What's the difference there? Well, so the difference would be just we rotate and it depends on what Saturday people want to vend. So obviously, not everyone is vending on the same Saturday. And so sometimes... It looks like we would end up having to have a wait list, but I hate telling vendors no Mm -hmm. because people always end up having to change their plans at the last minute. And I don't want to have someone be told no. And then they come around and walk at the market and see all these empty spaces because people had to cancel. So 
if I don't have to, I don't tell any anybody no. But that's how we end up having it packed out, just because we have such a variety of vendors and all of the dates change, and so we're able to pack it out. The the the, the more packed, the better. <laughs> I love not seeing any empty spaces. Yeah. I love having having that. Now, is there certain criteria then? Are there certain things that? Ooh. get them not into the farmer's market? So the only way that they would not be able to get into the market would be if they were trying to sell something that they did not hand make. We don't allow buy and oh, resell. Okay. So you can't go buy something on Amazon and then put it on your table. Okay. It has Damn. to be... <laughs> there goes that my... knock you out? <laughs> that was Rebecca's whole plan for next summer. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, you obviously can buy some, you know, foundational materials, but you have to do something to it yourself mm -hmm. to enhance it or embellish it to make it somewhat your own. Okay. That's really the only way... Or only... I imagine illegal substances, you know, Well, we, like that, we yeah. kind of frown away. You know, no alcohol, that kind of thing. Oh, we, you know, we want to make it... moonshine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be family friendly. It's water. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that really is the only reason that we would not allow someone to sell huh. would be yeah. if they did not make it themselves and they were because we want it to be original mm -hmm. and we don't want it to become like a uh, like a flea market and I'm not saying sure. that in a negative way but we just want it right. to be original handmade mm -hmm. in, um, yeah. items. Oh, yeah. well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, we did have guests in the office I think just yesterday from Canada and we were comparing <laughs> things that we can only get in Canada and the things ah. you can only get in the States. And we're going to start running a bootleg operation <laughs> <laughs> for some Nally's chili oh. <laughs> and some peach Twizzlers like and potentially Nally's chili in the can. Yeah. Our grocery store. Yeah. That's their, like that was the entire objective for their trip down here to the was States. Was to buy that? Yeah. Well, hmm. do they not ship to Canada? I mean, we want them here obviously to come right. visit, but nope. Can't get them into Canada. And huh. so I was telling them about my peach Twizzler issue here in the States. And they're oh. like, ooh, we could form a partnership here. And I said, perfect. <laughs> I also exchange. need these notepads, <laughs> which are at your There's Dollarama. Canadian notepads? They're like 15 bucks in the States. Huh. And at Dollarama, it's only like a dollar. So I could make <laughs> I mean, it my own. Sense. Like that was yeah. my plan. These beautiful. A U.S. dollar or a Canadian dollar? A Canadian uh -huh. dollar. <laughs> Perfect. Even better. So I guess mm, the farmer's okay. market's not my venue yeah, no for my bootleg there. tablet no, Trade thing. under the table situation. <laughs> okay. I'm curious because you the idea is to have the these homemade, these unique creations. What are some of the more unique items that you can think <laughs> of that have been, that e either are being sold or maybe in the past have been mm. sold at the farmer's market, food or craft or whatever? Yeah, so I'm trying to think of the vendors that we have now. So, you know, we do have a lot of jewelry. And mm -hmm. it, even when I say jewelry, but it's amazing the different types of jewelry that people sure. do. Right. And so they're very creative. You could have 20 vendors that make earrings and they're but all they're so different. different. Absolutely. That, yeah. is, that is very true. We have a lot of very talented um, jewelry makers and we have a lot of woodworkers that just do a fantastic job. Mm. Um, uh, gosh, I'm just trying to think. The, the food, um, you know, we have chicken, we have fry bread, we have Chinese, we have... And it's been a huge hit, the acai bowls. Uh, we have two oh, vendors. Yeah. Oh, those yeah. Are those they're are, so refreshing. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. wonderful. Both of them are just wonderful. And so... Um, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, <laughs> they, you know, and so there's just, like I said, just so much talent there. Are there still pony rides going yep. on? Yes, so. I love yep. seeing the little ponies. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do yep. you... Do you ever want to ride one? I yeah. kind of do, except that I'm like, oh, that wouldn't be good for the pony. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I grew up riding horses and I love horses. So I mostly I just want to go like pet the little yeah. pony, yeah. not ride it. But yeah. Yeah, pay the entrance fee. And I'm yeah. just gonna, we're just going to stand here <laughs> and pet, pet you. Pet the pony. <laughs> give I, you a carrot. I'll pay for the ride, but I don't want to get on. I'll just stand here and pet it. <laughs> that being said, so horses are really the only animals allowed yes. at the farmer's market. Absolutely. Correct? Okay. Yes. Service dogs, but and not service other dogs. Sure, sure. Yes, and that's, we've had a real issue with the pets because, and I, I I'm a pet owner. I have a golden retriever that I love Aww. and I, I love pets and I know people love bringing their pets to the market, even though we have signs that say no pets except for service animals. Mm -hmm. It has been a difficult thing to try and control of people not bringing their pets because they want them to come with. And so... We ask people if they're not service animals just to please bring them at home. And the main reason for that is because 
number one, there's food there that's mm-hmm. being sold. And number two, you know, I mean, we all want to think that our pet's not going to do anything to it. <laughs> another individual <laughs> or another pet. Uh-huh. We just don't want anyone getting bit by, you know, and there's a lot of kids there and kids like to go up to pets and you don't know how unpredictable they are. So we sure. really do ask people to please, if you're not a service, they're not a service animal to yeah. please leave their pets at home. Mm-hmm. Um, so but yes, horses other than that, <laughs> horses are the one that are allowed there, the, yes. The horses that are vendors are yeah, allowed exactly. there. Maybe don't ride yeah, your don't horse want, there no, either. Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah, the ones that give the pony rides. Yeah. Unless they're going to get in that little corral the, and just right. go in the <laughs> double <laughs> circle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Which is a big hit for the kids. The kids love those. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. So, Michelle, how did you get into this role of managing a farmer's market? Yeah, Was it I'm like so a curious. dream as a like, young child? <laughs> well, it's actually really funny because um, I'm from Alaska and I lived in Anchorage almost my whole life and they have had a phenomenal farmer's market down in Anchorage. Uh, huge, not as big actually as this one here but I always just thought, you know, this is just really cool and we would always go down there in the summer. Well, then we moved here and my husband does woodworking and so oh. he started having a booth and then he ended up getting on the board <laughs> and I never we go. went down to the farmer's market. I mean, I just didn't, you know? Yeah. And so, um, so then little um, did you know what little, was coming? Yeah. Little did I know. So then I went down there just to kind of spend time with him and I'm like, you know, this is just really neat. Well, then Aaron used to be the market manager and she kind of wanted to ease out of that role a little bit. And so I said, you know, I think I would really enjoy doing something like this. So, the first year I kind of eased into it of not really managing, but, you know, walked around, got to know the vendors and I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. And so then she said, you know, would you be willing to do this? You know, not full time, obviously, cause I have a part-time job, but would you be willing to do this? And I said, yes. And I've been doing it now for probably my fifth year. Oh, okay. wow. And I absolutely love it. I love the vendors. I love walking around and talking to them. Um, you know, I am responsible for putting them in their place every Saturday, <laughs> which can be very stressful. Um, by by putting them in your place, like figuratively, yes. yeah. <laughs> literally and fig- most of the time, of just uh, yeah. yes. literally, literally, <laughs> yes. But no, but like I said, yeah. yeah. But you know, you know, when when you deal with people, I mean, you yeah. know, but um, they're we know, but yeah. they're they're phenomenal. I I love I love them. They are just great, and they're happy to be there. And I love seeing their stuff. I love seeing the creativity. I love doing it. So a couple of years ago, I I don't, I love the farmer's market. Let me yeah, say that I do too. first. I don't get there as often as I, I need to. I never get there as many times as I want to go, yeah. but I'm always just so happy wandering around. <laughs> Same there. here. Yeah. A couple of years ago at the fair management booth table, <laughs> you had tote bags. And I don't know if you still have oh, them. Oh, like Great Falls Farmer's Market yep. totes? Yes. Yeah. Yep. I love that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the canvas one? Is it? Yes. Th- okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. The really sturdy yes. canvas one. Yes. Yes. It's like built out of. <laughs> well, you need it because you load rope. up at the farmer's market. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Every time we go and my husband's like, oh, I don't want to go to the farmer's market. I'm like, fine, I'm going to go and I'm not mm-hmm. buying any sweet corn. You better buy some sweet corn. Like, this is a big thing. <laughs> like, okay, then let me go. And then yeah. we go and he gets his sweet corn and then we get tomatoes and then he's bought three chickens and a loaf of bread. <laughs> and I'm like, you just wanted corn. What's going on right. here? No, One bag was not in. enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so exciting. You see there and you see all the fresh stuff. Yeah. Yes. and the local vendors and you're like oh this is better and you just yes. want to load up yeah. yeah yeah and that produce is i mean the produce is just wonderful mm-hmm. it's just great and produce. the bread too from, yes. from some of these vendors mm. yeah yeah if you yeah. yeah definitely try the bread yes a couple maybe last year a couple years ago i got sausage from fall tree farms mm-hmm. breakfast sausage mm-hmm Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> you get the sausage and your oh, sweet corn man. and the bread. It's Good just stuff. It's a mess. And I will tell you, and this is where I'm very selfish. I took my niece down to the farmer's market uh, two years ago. She's like, oh, I would like this and I would like that and I would like this. And I'm like, we're shopping for me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, no, no. <laughs> she ended up getting these beautiful bracelets. Oh, and the yeah. vendor there explained to her what the stones were and what mm-hmm. they did. And then 
She's just a kid after my own heart. She found some organic skincare that she really lovely, <laughs> yeah, yes. loved that she had to have, and then a homemade like um, fleece shawl. Okay, yep. And I loved that vendor. She yeah. was absolutely amazing. And and I have to tell you, <laughs> I didn't plan on spending that much money on my niece <laughs> at the farmer's market, so I didn't have a lot of cash. But the vendors. We're taking Venmo, yes. which was so oh, nice. That yeah. is helpful mm-hmm. because not everyone e- either remembers to bring cash or wants to go find it. Or didn't it plan out, to spend that much cash. Or yeah. didn't <laughs> plan to spend that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was just really nice. Mm-hmm. I was just standing there thinking, how do I tell this little girl with her big eyes, no, you can't get that because Aunt Becca doesn't have any more right. cash. No, we can't support our local <laughs> vendors. Sorry. <laughs> and she she walks aw- and she just looks at me and the vendor says, well, I'll take Venmo. And I said, well, that's perfect. Yes. Yeah. And so we, puck, we get all this stuff and we're walking away. And my niece, at the age of eight at that time, looks at me and says, it's just really nice to be able to support local <laughs> artists. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, where oh, did child? you learn that line? <laughs> Are you just going to become me what is the deal <laughs> so i was like i don't know who taught her this maybe her mom because she's you very did, creative clearly. but i'm gonna give her mom some yeah. credit because she's an artist <laughs> but i'm like that is exactly yeah. why we spend mm-hmm. just a little bit more on right. some of these things because they're handcrafted mm-hmm. right and you know the person you're supporting right mm-hmm. right yeah you get to meet and talk with those people i've um nancy blatnik's booth yep. there oh, i yes. mean i have multiple earrings from her yes. note cards from her she's such a talented she is. amazing artist and so hers has always been one of my mm-hmm. favorite booths and then um lizzie's love young oh, oh yeah she's been there for forever they are amazing yeah. Yes, so these are. are dog treats. Yep. Tell, tell us more about, about Lizzie's love. Yeah, so they she does sell dro- dog treats, and they have been there, well, at least since I've been there. And they, you know, they are just so faithful. They mm-hmm. come every Saturday, and yeah, that's, and that's the wonderful thing about a lot of these permanent vendors is they have been there. Like, we have a couple of them that have literally been there for 20, mm-hmm. 25 years, yeah. come every, practically every single Saturday, every single year. And, you know, in 2020 with COVID, we didn't have farmer's market. Mm-hmm. We we were kind of holding out to see, yeah. can we do this? Can we not do this? And the regulations were just too, we just couldn't it make it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And boy, in 2021, did the community come out and support mm. these events. I mean, it was amazing how well we did last year. Mm. Um, because I think people missed it. They love coming out. And like what you said, they love supporting local. And like I said, these vendors are so talented. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. So... There's yeah. one this year that I've walked by a few times, and I just love the idea. You get these gorgeous, fresh bouquets of flowers so you can walk home with them. Yes. And they're oh. stunning yes. arrangements. They're yeah. just gorgeous. So it's another one where maybe that reminds you of, like, if you've been to the market in Seattle and yes. there's those fresh flowers everywhere. That's, like, right here in Great Falls. Right. So you walk, and there's these gorgeous bouquets you can pick up and take I didn't home. Know that was there. Yeah. yeah, that's actually Virginia, and she's been there quite a few years, and it's really neat because she comes down there with her girls, mm-hmm. and her flowers are gorgeous. Gorgeous. I oh. mean, they're just beautiful. So, yeah. Well, see, now you have to make sure you get yes. there. Yes, she's always there. Yeah. She's usually <laughs> always there every Saturday. Well, I think I get to go this Saturday Ooh, morning. Oh, good. We'll see how the how my life pans out yeah. for me. <laughs> you know, I might be able to go this Saturday too. Same thing. We'll see yeah. how life pans out with yeah. the timing. But uh, also, honey. I love getting local honey. Yep. And there's options for that at the farmers market as well. Yes. And Chris actually, um, he does honey, and he's been there for years and years and years. And you mm-hmm. can actually find him on the street. He's on the street in his little <laughs> yellow truck. And so, and I think we do have actually another vendor who's um, selling honey too. But he's the one that came to my mind. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, and that's what I mean. The the assortment of what you can get there. It's from food to crafts. It's just such a wide assortment that whatever you're looking for, more than likely you're going to be able to find there. So, And as Shannon and I both shared, we don't get there as often as we want. It seems like such a short window that mm-hmm. farmer's market happens. Um, how long does it happen? When does it start? When does it end? So we start the first Saturday in June. We end up um, being finished the last Saturday in September, okay. so four months. Okay, so you still have time. There's still yes, a there's quite a few Saturdays yeah. to get to it. No, and then is there, and maybe this isn't in the works yet, but in the past there's been some 
either indoor ones or Wednesday evening ones. Oh, yes. The season. There used is to that, be a Wednesday. Yeah. Is that, do we know if that's happening this fall? Or So we what haven't we had know? the Wednesday <laughs> ones for quite a few years. Yeah, I yeah. know. It, um, but speaking of craft fairs, yes, I'm glad that you brought that up because Aaron actually just scheduled us to have a, when we've never done it, sponsored by us before, a fall craft fair at the last Saturday in October. Oh, fantastic. It's going to be at the Civic Center and we're going to make it kind of a Halloween theme and we're going to invite the community to come out. We're going to have candy at each vendor's table for them to go trick or treating. We're going to have our face painters there. No Um, restrictions on that. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, any, yeah, Yeah. anybody. And, and then we also do have our Christmas one. I think that's the second Saturday in December. And that one is always very widely Mm -hmm. um, attended and very well. Yeah, that one's a fun one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have one in April. It's a, it's a spring one. So, and they're all at the Civic Center. Well, that's cool. And then as the manager of the farmer's market, do you manage those as well? Get the vendors in and... Actually, that's Erin. Oh, so Erin really focuses. Goodness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, she definitely focuses. She focuses on you know taking the applications, getting the vendors where they need to be. She does that part of it. So I don't. I'm not really involved in the craft fair part of it. I just you can just enjoy. And, I just go with yeah. Erin, enjoy, and help where I can. And yeah, perfect. Nice. Yeah. Um, hours of the farmer's market. Uh, it seems like it's super early in the morning and then they were not adjusted. late enough in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that the, there was adjustments made this year that mm-hmm. for me, that kind of that same, like, oh boy, if I want to get in and get the good produce, I got to get there really early. It's not quite as early this year. Right. Yeah. So our hours used to be 745 until 12. And for years, people were saying, you know, hey, you know, can we go later? Because a lot of people with kids more than likely aren't going to be getting up at 745 to drag their kids out to the farmer's market. Or just me. Or or anybody. People (laughs) want to sleep in on Saturday. So, yeah, so the board decided um, this year to change the hours from 830 until 1. And I think it's still taking Mm. the community a little bit of time to get used to because they're still coming and we're selling. People knocking down the door They're still coming at 745. uh, But, uh, you know, we definitely notice a um, lapse in people coming from 1230 to 1 now. Part of that could be because it's been 90 degrees for the last It has been month. really hot. It's been yeah. very hot. Yeah. Very hot. Mm-hmm. But we encourage people because, you know, a lot of people, especially the food vendors, were saying, you know, we kind of just start getting to serve our food at 11 or 1130. Sure. And then we're done by 12. Well, especially some because there's uh, most of it's, I mean... I will eat any type of food any time of day. So that's no per- regulations for yeah. her. <laughs> personally, for me, I'll go and have the skewers or whatever at right. 7 a.m. Uh, but those are typically thought of as more Ex- lunchtime food. Exactly. Foods. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it is amazing that you said that, you know, I would see people at the Chinese place. I would see people at the skewer place. Nine o'clock, there's already a line. I'm yeah. like, well, you know, it's, it's good stuff. But it's yeah. the weekend, you know? It, it is yeah. the weekend. Let's have Chinese for breakfast. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah. so yes, our hours, so our hours have changed. And like I said, I know it's taking people a little bit of time to get adjusted because, you know, they yeah. were that, those hours for years and years. So you seem pleasantly surprised though. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know it went that late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, and I don't think a lot of people do. So right. it's never bothered me what time it starts. <laughs> right. It's just what time it ends. Yeah. <laughs> I usually stroll in like at 1130 right. <laughs> Running and then around I'm, to get I the do lunch. the you don't have any eggs left and they're like we've been well, here since right those sold you know 5 a.m. yeah right. we sold out those at 830 right. <laughs> so are there things because we were talking about this if you want I mean it's open later but if right. you want to get in on some of the produce it's better to come a little earlier Probably. just for that selection. Yeah, because a lot of people do come early for the produce. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah they do. And I, egg buyers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I, I suppose depending on the, you know, depending on the item, some things would be sold out early. But sure. it definitely is probably a little better for the produce part of it to, you know, get there as early as you can to before yeah. everybody else snatches them up. So <laughs> when you take yeah. your so, niece and she so. just buys bracelets and yeah. then that, blankets. Then and you can go as late as you want. Skin care and yeah. soap. Yeah. That's totally fine. We bought fine. so much stuff. <laughs> so it was did so you, fun. Did you buy any? Okay. They do have really fun things for ki- to entertain kids too, because I see they have like marshmallow shooters, like these really yes. like um, inventive things and yes. like little cars and stuff. Did you buy any marshmallow shooters? I've been tempted. No. Yeah. <laughs> I have as well, just because I think it would be fun at our house. Yeah, that's where I'm thinking too. Surprise as my grown husband. Adults, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hide behind the couch yeah. and hit Comes him. Comes home from work one day. Bam, bam. Marshmallows. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> there has been so many times on this podcast where people are like, and we've got stuff for the kids. And we're like, and we're like uh, well, that sounds fun. Let's not limit it to Can the we children. Not put an age? <laughs> yeah, no age restriction on that, please. Yeah. No, adults can buy those too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so for someone who maybe is coming from out of town mm-hmm. to visit us here in Great Falls or just hasn't been before, where do you park? Where's oh, the best that's place a to great park? question. <laughs> yeah, that is a, that is a really good question because that's that's kind of a challenge too. Um, so there's a couple parking lots that people are allowed to park in Energy West. Um, I think across from the market, and I'm sorry, I don't know exactly what the name of that big parking lot yeah. is, and it's all for free. Mm-hmm. And of course, parking on the street is free, but we really encourage people, especially, well, mainly if that business is open to please not park in front of that business, mm-hmm. because we had yeah. have had some business to say, you know, your vendors or your customers are parking in our spot and then our customers then have no place. So we really are asking people to please, if that business is open, to please not park in front of their business or in their... Patronize them. Yes, right, exactly. At go in yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Or at least go yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. And also in their parking lots because those businesses down there are paying for those parking lots. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so again, if we have, you know, 20 of our customers parked in their spot, then their customers can't park. So yes, but other than that, I mean, all of the parking on the street is free. And mm-hmm. so, you know... That's, I think, pretty much where people park for the most part. Um, One of my favorite ways to do farmer's market is to either start or end. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like before going to the farmer's market and maybe do them both. I like to get coffee and a pastry Mm -hmm. at Electric City Mm -hmm. and then do the farmer's market and then get a brat and a (laughs) breakfast mimosa Uh at Keller Guys. I was just going to say, we used to, because a number of our great local businesses down there are open on Saturday. And if you want to you know, have something else besides the food that's yep. available there or in addition to. Right, in addition to. I mean, to. I yes. think that's, that's really the best part is the in addition to, right? right. you got to sample everything. Um, we've also done where we go to Celtic Cowboy. They've had oh, like yeah. breakfast burritos there. You can get, again, we have all place, all these wonderful places that have these yes. mimosas that you can get. Like yes. the strawberry basil one is my favorite from Keller Geist. There's, yeah. you know, great drinks at Celtic Cowboy. You can go over to Tracy's. But I mm-hmm. just love making the day of it. You do the For farmer's sure. market yeah. and then when they shut down at one... <laughs> Right, you just so go late. On. Just places. keep going down the street, you know. Sure. Yeah. Stop in at Clover and mm-hmm. stop in at the Blue Rose. Go to Dragonfly. Check yeah. out Winston Galleries. Like, there's just, it's just the perfect reason to, to immerse start. yourself yep. in the downtown corridor. For sure. Mm-hmm. With that being the anchor, mm-hmm. absolutely. So right. people, that like is your that on too. your agenda now. I like to do it as a local, and also that's one of my favorite things to do. And I have had family visiting yep. before. Mm-hmm. We love to do that on Saturday mornings. Take them down to the farmers market, mm-hmm. show them the Montana locally made stuff, and then spend some more time downtown. Mm-hmm. And I think it's one of the things that locals will take for granted that you have for this sure, right? available to you mm-hmm. all the time. And it's not to me. It's not just about the produce that you get, although it is amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's about seeing all the different local artisans that come out because yeah. every, I mean, no one Saturday is the same right. as another, right. which I think is really the benefit of going every week mm-hmm. when your life allows, but you get to see all these new vendors mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. spread that spend a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think that. one of the neatest things I think for me, honestly, in doing the market is you have someone who... You know, they're doing some things in their basement or their garage and they think, you know, is this really good? Are people really going to like this? Yeah. And it's just the neatest thing to see all these new people come out and then, you know, people pay at the end of the market on Saturday and they're so excited. They just said, I I can't believe I just made whatever X and they're so proud of themselves and they're so Mm. excited and to know that people like their stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that to me is really one of the best parts of being a part of it is to see people's talents that people love. Like appreciate it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Historically, it's been a really great proving ground for new businesses Mm -hmm. to test products, to see if these are things that people want to buy and then maybe Mm -hmm. look at a wholesale operation or opportunity with some of our local businesses but I just it's that fun little yeah. proving ground and you know there's some stuff that's on sale there where you know you walk by and you're like that's creative and you may not buy it but right. still let the vendor know like right. hey still be encouraged. thanks for being there like yeah. that's 
awesome what yeah. you came up with. <laughs> right. Well, and I just wanted to, when you had just said that, uh, a business came to mind and, you know, Home Tana. Uh-huh. There we go. So they had started at the farmer's market. And then, of course, you know, they got their storefront in Missoula. And then just recently, over the last three or four months, she just put another store right around the corner from the farmer's yes. market. And I actually, I had just seen Shirsty a couple of weeks ago. And we were talking about that. And it's like, can you believe that this, you started at the farmer's market. Right. Yeah. And they just do phenomenal. And she just expanded. And mm-hmm. it, it's just really neat to see what you just said of yeah. a business getting started from the farmer's market. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's just a unique venue. And I think it's one of those low pressure sales areas. Right. Where people are there to see something new, learn mm-hmm. something, maybe have a list of things they need to get or want to get for the week. But it's just, it's a unique environment. Mm-hmm. And I think that that should be treasured in any time you go to experience it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So at the setup of the farmer's market, you have... Uh, the main kind of stretch yep. there. And then there's two mm-hmm. loops, basically. Right. Is there an ideal flow of traffic <laughs> or a recommended route that you take when you when you enter the farmer's market? I mean, not necessarily. Okay. I think a lot of times people hit the street first because mm-hmm. that's where all the... F- I really try and keep all of the, the food people on the street. The pr- yeah, produce and things there. Yeah, yeah. and the produce, yeah. yeah. So that's... And then I think, you know, then people either go to Whittier, which is to the left in front of the Civic Center, or Mm -hmm. they go the other way. So I think it just, and a lot of it too depends on, because there's so many different ways you can get into the market. Right. And that was actually one of our challenges, like I was saying before with COVID, was that there was no way we could only have one entrance because you can get to the market by probably Mm -hmm. seven or eight different ways. (laughs) Right. So I think a lot of it just depends on, well... Like I said, if you're going there hungry, you're going to hit the food first. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's also like a lot of things, a good people watching opportunity mm-hmm. there as well. <laughs> there <Yes>. is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm all about those. Yes. <laughs> Get my food. Yeah. yeah. And relax. Yeah. And that's what's, you know, that's what's really neat too, is when you kind of walk around and you see people having their food and in that middle area is where all mm-hmm. the grass is. But, you know, families are just sitting there on the grass eating their food right They're i mean not in front of screens exactly not, you know yeah busy busy just sitting and just enjoying sitting and enjoying themselves and being a part and, of the community right yeah exactly yeah. yeah so that's really neat okay are we missing anything that we should know about do you have some market? secret piece of information that would be like oh my gosh <laughs> well i saw okay so granted this podcast will come out friday okay i saw aaron i think was promoting some type of special surprise announcement Ooh, but that's on saturday well that so was actually last know. saturday so oh, okay. oh, that, was, that was oh, the craft perfect. fair that okay. was the craft fair i was that we, wondering yeah, if that was the announcement that okay. was the announcement yeah perfect. and so you heard it second here <laughs> folks <laughs> right. yes i got my yes confused well, apparently. that'll okay. happen yeah. and all of our craft fairs i mean even though we're quote unquote sponsoring it it definitely is not just for farmers market vendors Mm -hmm. it's anybody who wants to set up a booth i would highly suggest that when the applications come out they sell out extremely quickly i bet how many how many vendors is that limited to so we at the first time we did it we when we did the civic center we did the upstairs room and the downstairs room so we probably had about a hundred and some we found that having it upstairs was difficult because people either have Forgot problems with go. stairs or you're exactly, even though you have signs, mm-hmm. people did not just kind really of zone it out. Per, yeah. Definitely. And so then last year we ended up just having it in the downstairs area and that hold or held about probably 65. Oh, so I think that's what we're going to do again. Nice. It's just quite a few. It's very yeah. much. And it was sold out mm-hmm. and it was so, and I anticipate that to happen again with both of them this year. So, okay. yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that that happens. Yeah. Well, and it's neat, too, because as we get into the fall and winter months, mm-hmm. it's, it's more to look forward to. And you yes. still kind of get the fix of getting the locally made, yep. the vendors, the crafts. Mm-hmm. I've always loved the Christmas one. That, yes. was, that one's always really fun. So this one in fall and Halloween yeah. theme should be a lot of fun. I think so, too. And people will start, you know, you start thinking about the holidays, you know, around the, you know, around Halloween time. And then, like I said, kind of trying to do the whole trick or treating thing along with it to bring out your yeah. kids. And I, I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a great craft fair. Well, I know there are people now in, you know, mid late August who are already like fall <laughs> Halloween excited. So I'm sure there yes. will be a lot of excitement already for that. Yeah. So, Michelle, 
is it tough? I mean, you you used to live in Alaska. Now you live in Montana. Similar states when it comes to outdoor recreation and things to mm-hmm. do in the, in the one season where you are able to be outside uh, without when it's warm, right? Yeah. yeah. So, do you feel? Do do you go to every farmer's market through the season, or do you take a Saturday and go out and explore? So. I literally pretty much am there every Saturday with the exception, um, I try and get up to Anchorage at least one time in mm. the summer because I have my kids and my grandkids up there. Mm. So I miss I miss probably only one Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Now, during COVID, of course, when we didn't have it, it actually worked out to my benefit because my daughter had a baby, so I was up in Alaska oh. for two oh. months. <laughs> so that actually ended up working itself yeah. out. But no, I really try not to take off in the summer because it it's a lot to put on somebody else to have to organize it and manage it because it really is it really is a seven day a week job I mean Saturday I'm there all day I start making my list on Sunday and just pretty much am doing that every day up until the following Saturday and so it's a lot to put on someone else so I try not to be gone if I don't have to and does your husband still have a booth there Mm -hmm. Yep, he and he actually shares it with Aaron, and so oh, nice. wow. yes, so he he loves it, and so he does the craft fairs and and what it does is there a name of his yes. business for the win? Plug it. Yeah. For, there you go <laughs> for the win. F O U R because there were four in our family, and our last name is Win. There you go. And he does woodworking and and all that. Okay. So yeah, I'll so he's to, been there for quite I'll a while. Look for that this week. I appreciate yeah, that. Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, you're going to devote your time to doing a podcast yeah. episode with us. You can shamelessly plug <laughs> whatever you want. Not a problem. I'd be happy to. <laughs> so before we wrap up here, I have, so you moved from Alaska right. to Montana. Besides the farmer's market, mm-hmm. what's uh, one of your favorite things about, about oh, being yeah. in Great Falls? Um well, we have a lot. Of, we have a lot of family here, and mm-hmm. so that's oh. and so that's nice. That is nice. Yeah, and um, I do have to say, I'm not a heat girl. So yeah. heat is this is not for me. So it works. Well, yes. let me yeah. then. You can put the battle in my house to an end. <laughs> now living in both locations, Alaska is obviously cooler in the summer. Oh, than abso- here. absolutely. When I was there just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was every day I was there was raining and 55 degrees. Oh, wow. Yeah. That yeah. sounds miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca's my, not a heat girl either. I'd be able yeah. to put a jacket on. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it was in the 70s and 80s here, that's my ideal. But sure. I, when it's in the 90s for a month straight, it's a little, warm. It's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit, bit toasty. Much. It, it has, has been. been I, it's been I agree. Just yeah. hold Hold It'll on change. Tight. Yeah. It'll change soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's funny because, you know, a lot of us have been complaining every Saturday when it's been 90, how hot it's been. And then it was funny because last Saturday it was very cool. And yeah. so when we got very there, pleasant. Yeah, yeah, it was. And so, you know, we, our check-in starts at 630. So I get there at like 615 and I had a jacket on yeah. and people were there wrapped up in blankets. And I said, okay, no remember, complaining. Right. Yeah. You remember, remember that. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be 90 that's soon. That's exactly yeah. right. So no complaining how cold it is. You got so. the whole array of <laughs> exactly. temperatures around here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But the All September right. weather is wonderful oh, then because uh, that's perfect yeah. for going down there. And it's not too hot, not too cold. Yeah. And so, yeah. All right. So. so last farmer's market of this season is September. the last Saturday in September. Provided it doesn't, it doesn't snow. Okay. Correct. Like it did in 2019. Okay. So <laughs> it snow, snows, no. stay home. Yeah, that yeah. was the only time we ever canceled the market ever in our yeah. history was oh when we had gosh. that literal blizzard that last Saturday yeah. in September. Yeah. We were crazy. doing we were doing a fall photo and video shoot that day. Oh, so you oh. remember that day? I remember it well. <laughs> and you were outside. <laughs> yep. And we were trying to make people look happy and excited <laughs> to be strolling the River's Edge Trail. And we laughed and our our film crew was like, are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, this is typical fall in Great Falls. Right. So I, let's is, yeah. let's embrace it. it let's get it done. It can still be great and beautiful. It just wasn't what you were expecting. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So we had this beautiful blanket of snow and fall colors on the leaves that on the tree. Pretty. Yeah. It was a beautiful photo shoot. <laughs> just unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, Michelle, thank you for thank coming you. on. Thank you for all the time you devote to the farmer's market. Yeah, it's, it's really 
a real asset for us. Thank it you. Really I appreciate is. it. I'm so glad we have it. Not just for, for locals, but again, either you take people who are visiting. Right. It's a great reason to come spend the weekend here in Great Falls. Yeah. 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 And we can plan your Saturday, which means you got to come in early to do all the other things that you would want to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by, by the way, maybe you didn't know you need help planning your trip to Great Falls. You can give us a call at 406-761-4436. Visit us at visitgreatfallsmontana.org. Our dynamic team uh, is definitely <laughs> here to help you make sure you make the most of your, your experience in Great Falls. We know all the nooks and crannies of this community. We're going to be able to shed all the light or on every secret. Or we can ask experts like Michelle if we don't <laughs> well, know the correct. answer. Yeah. <laughs> and those of you who stopped into our office, you know, all we take is the information people smarter than us give us, and then we just regurgitate, regurgitate it. it. Yep, it's our job. So don't make, you know, we look awesome, but it's usually because we visited with someone else. So. 100%. Yep. So thanks for listening. Check out all of our episodes at wherenodamexperts.com. And make sure you rate, review, and subscribe. We haven't said that for a long time. No, we haven't. It's usually uh, a little check button or plus or something in the upper right-hand corner. Click that. That way you get the episodes just show up. You don't have to think about it. Yeah. And that's wherever you get your podcasts. Absolutely. I'm not going to list them all. All kinds of podcast platforms. (laughs) We're out there. (laughs) So thank you. And thank you all. uh, Until we see your bright, smiling, happy, beautiful face here in Great Falls, we hope you are creating amazing memories with your friends and family wherever you are. Bye-bye. We are no damn experts as the recorded claims from Great Falls, Montana, covering what you need to know about this amazing damn town.